the latest tech. People love iPhone, and it's an important part of our daily lives. Interviews. We see far too many products that come on the market that you look at that you say, was a blind person ever even consulted for something like this? Accessibility. The most interesting thing over the last couple of years is the emphasis on gaming uh, and accessibility. This is Double Tap TV. Hey guys, welcome to another Double Tap TV. I'm Stephen Scott. And I am Marco Flalo. Stephen, correct me if I'm wrong with this statement, but I feel that since we've been doing this show, accessibility in gaming is converging way more than it ever has been before. Oh, absolutely. I mean, accessibility is a huge part of gaming now. And look, it has a long way to go without a doubt. But at the same time, we are seeing amazing strides forward. Just in the last few years, we saw products like the Xbox Adaptive Controller come out that enabled people with certain physical conditions to be able to play games. And more recently, of course, with Project Leonardo, PlayStation has got involved and literally got into the game as well. And they now have their own controller, uh, which they are bringing out. It is incredible to see that happening. It is also incredible to see so many big, as they call them, the AAA title games, the games that everyone's playing, the mainstream games everyone's talking about, becoming more accessible. So yeah, things have moved on. A long way to go, but we're going in a good way, going in a good direction. But we're gonna be talking all about gaming this week on Double Tap TV. And if you remember, I think it's a couple of years ago, maybe on our last or two seasons ago, our good friend Steve Saylor, the blind gamer, joined us to talk about one of the first game experiences he had that was accessible, The Last of Us Part Two. Well, guess what? Steve Saylor is gonna be joining us again today, talking all about the Game Conference Awards, which are, what, Stephen? Well, the Game Conference Awards, quite frankly, is the annual event, the event of the year that recognizes the efforts of individual people and teams in the game development industry who are working hard to improve accessibility for players with disabilities. And Steve Saylor is the host of that event, and that's why we'll be talking to him a bit later. Uh, but Tara Voltke is the co-director of the Game Conference Awards. She's been on Double Tap TV with us before, and uh, she told viewers at the event how these awards signal a shift in how people view accessibility in gaming. You know, when we started the first game accessibility conference, I don't know that we ever would have expected that we would expand into an award show. But we're proud to have 10 conferences, yes, 10, in three countries under our belt at, that have all worked towards education and sharing how to do game accessibility and uplift the voices of disabled gamers and to be able to switch from education to recognition of all of the work that has been done is truly amazing. The awards are arranged into 18 categories, including recognition for the top AAA games that are accessible, specific awards for differing disabilities, best journalism and advocacy, and even hardware innovation, among others. Now, one of the AAA rated games to win big on the night was The Last of Us Part One. It won out not once, but in three categories. First up, winning the best blind slash low vision category uh, for accessibility, as announced by visually impaired gamer Ross Miner. The Last of Us 2 was an incredible landmark. The first AAA game to be designed from the ground up to be fully accessible to gamers without sight. For the remake of Part 1, they not only managed to bring everything over from The Last of Us 2, but built on that even further with audio description for cutscenes, which is a narration track that describes visual action. That's again the first for any AAA game. The Last of Us Part 1 also won out in the most improved category following its revival, almost five years on from its original release, with huge accessibility improvements built in. Presenter Mark Brown from the Game Maker's Toolkit explained why it won. So The Last of Us Part 2 really set the benchmark for what accessibility can look like in a big AAA game. It had over 60 features you could fiddle with and it covered pretty much every type of accessibility option you could think of. This remake, Part 1, has pretty much every feature from Part 2, as well as some innovative additions like haptic dialogue and audio description. We've never seen a remake add so many accessibility features to the original game. And part of what you're trying to do with a remake is to expand to a wider group of people, and also to appeal to those who enjoyed the original game, but are now older and may have different capabilities. And you can't do either of those things without good accessibility. The awards were shortlisted by an expert panel and the winners were decided through a combination of public and jury votes. 
along with other deserving individuals and games companies, the big tech companies also won out on the night, with Microsoft winning in a number of categories, but perhaps most notably for its new adaptive accessories. The presenter of the award, Dr. Mick Donegal from the charity Special Effects in the UK, explained why they won the Hardware Innovation Award and what it meant. The launch of the Xbox Adaptive Controller back in 2018 was truly transformational. So to see those same principles live on and evolve further in the form of the adaptive accessories is a great step forward. It's not just in terms of the greater flexibility and access that the accessories provide, but the competitive cost too. Until now, a high quality switch interface for less than £60, $60 in the USA, was virtually unheard of. So I have no doubt that this suite of accessories will have a profound impact on the lives of many, democratizing access to accessible technology, not just for gaming, but also other technologies too. So many congratulations to everyone involved at Microsoft on a job very well done. The awards celebrate the efforts of the game development industry to make games more accessible for players with disabilities, Mark. And that's really the key point. And what you're hearing there is, you know, frankly, huge success individually for indie companies and also for the big players as well. It's a big deal, these awards. You know, Stephen, not only did the Game Conference Awards celebrate the best in accessibility in gaming, but it was perhaps the most accessible award show ever. So when we come back here in Double Tap TV, we welcome someone extremely respected in the industry in accessible gaming, and he joins us next here on Double Tap TV. You're watching Double Tap TV. Get involved. Follow us at Double Tap On Air or email us feedback at doubletaponair.com. Double Tap TV will be right back. You're watching Double Tap TV. Back here on Double Tap TV talking all about the Game Conference Awards, Stephen. Yeah, an incredible uh, night for sure this year. And, you know, a real chance to highlight and promote the amazing work that's being done across the industry by individuals and teams to make gaming more accessible. Now, someone who knows all about this and someone who's been advocating for quite a long time in this space, someone very well respected, is Ben Breen. You might know him, though, as Sightless Combat, uh, because that is the name he goes by when he's gaming and uh, generally when he's talking to people like us as well, Mark. Uh, he likes this name. Uh, so Sightless Combat is with us here on Double Tap TV. Good to have you here, Ben. Thank you. Great to be back. Always a pleasure to, to be on uh, things like this. It's amazing to see you again. It's been a while. <laughs> now, it's fair to say it was one of the most accessible award shows, right? Mark said it uh, before the break. I mean, you had ASL, you had BSL, audio description, everything in there. Yes, yeah, so much. Like, it, it was the most probably the most accessible award show I've seen, which is, well, I mean, or not seen, I guess. <laughs> That's the best part of it, though. Like, you didn't have to see it to enjoy it. And there were no, you know, gaps left uh, empty, as it were, as to what was going on. Uh, audio description was, you know, very well crafted and well delivered, considering the tiny gaps that people had to describe between. So <laughs> just, uh, you know, trying to get descriptions of people in as, as, as they go. But... You know, of course, I can't speak to the, the visual uh, accommodations, you know, like the, the signing or whatever. But the fact of the matter was, it was a great event and a lot of award shows could learn from this. You know, it doesn't matter how big the show, they could definitely accommodate these uh, these infrastructural uh, integral pillars, if you like, that would definitely make it easier for me and so many others to watch these shows without having to say, um, what's going on? Who's coming up? What? What? Why are they all laughing? <laughs> Etc. Now you're someone who's very well respected. Your voice is, is heard across accessibility in gaming. So, so got to ask you, you your opinion here. Truthfully, how accessible is gaming in 2023? The reality is there are still too few games that you can actually play without assistance. But it's definitely improvements. It's definitely an improvement on what we would have before. So. Now you can play The Last of Us Part 1 and 2. So a game that was previously several years old and much loved uh, wasn't playable. And then Last of Us Part 1 came out last year with audio description and, you know, all the other features that were, you know, part of Part 2. And, you know, it's, it's a matter of you can now play that start to finish without needing any assistance to do it. God of War Ragnarok came very close uh, to being fully playable. But there are certain things holding it back, which was a shame. But, you know, the stride from God of War 2018 to Ragnarok is absolutely phenomenal. It is such a big leap. And I can't wait to see what that team and 
anyone who worked on that project is going to go on to do. It's going to be very interesting to see where that goes. And even stuff like as Dusk Falls that released last year, that's a, a first of its kind in terms of, you know, a choice based, uh, you know, driven adventure on consoles. And even stuff like Sea of Thieves, where they're continuing to make improvements, you know, in a live service setting, which is not something you've, you know, we've seen before, really, that, you know, a game that's previously had, you know, virtually nothing has had very key pieces added to it. It doesn't make it playable, but it makes it sort of workable with the right people, which is a great start. It's interesting because, you know, I saw they had categories for specific disabilities. So, for example, Best Physical Mobility uh, Accessibility Award, Best Cognitive Accessibility Award, and, of course, the Best Blind Slash Low Vision Accessibility category as well. I wonder, though, Ben, is it ever frustrating to you when you come up against a game and you think, wow, they've put a huge amount of effort into players who have, say, cognitive disabilities, uh, and they obviously put a lot of work into that, but, you know, they forgot to put in the audio description for us blind people. Does that happen? What's your take on that? It does happen. Um, you know, you can see where work has been done in fields other than, let's say, gaming without sight. Um, for for an example, you know there there are many games where the accessibility could have been better from you know where I stand. But the point is, it's also important to celebrate those wins as well. So even if they don't help you directly, and as much as it might be frustrating, knowing that it's improving for other people as well is also a great motivator. Because you know once they've done the work on, so say it's a game that's gonna then have a sequel on the same engine like you know or or a prequel in the case of last of us where they sort of ported all the features to the the you know the prequel game which is a very strange turn of events you know even with that all the work had been done to make say the menus work and the navigation work and the auto aim and the the captions and whatever else was working so then all they have to do is improve upon it in the areas that were previously like not completely lacking but weaker let's say so you know they might improve the audio design they might improve the you know the, they might add menu narration because all the menus are now you know d-pad based that kind of thing or d-pad navigable there's all sorts of things to look at ben breen also known as sightless combat it is always good to hear your voice on this subject and continue doing what you're doing of course working at the rnib mild stomping grounds uh, great to see you there and doing what you do to represent us as blind people in the community and thank you so much for joining us on double tap tv Stephen, when we come back, another Stephen, Steve Saylor, joins us, the blind gamer. He was the host of the awards this year, and he gives us his take. Stick around. Can't get enough Double Tap TV? Subscribe to the podcast and get your fill of Double Tap every day. Visit DoubleTapOnAir.com and follow us now. Double Tap TV will be right back. You're watching Double Tap TV. Back on Double Tap TV talking all about the Game Conference Award. What was this, this third year, Stephen? Yeah, that's right. And uh, the host this year was none other than the blind gamer himself, Steve Saylor. Another Steve is welcomed on to uh, Double Tap TV here. Steve, thank you so much for coming back. It is absolutely a pleasure, Stephen. Thank you so much for having me on again. So how did you come to be involved with the Game Conference Awards this time around? Well, uh, actually, uh, how my sort of how the involvement with it happened was um, initially um, uh, can I play that dot com, which is a, a great site for uh, for uh, talking about accessibility. We, they do a lot of accessibility reviews and previews and news. Um, it was uh, we always had uh, the, the site always had like this yearly awards uh, given out to the best of, uh, of accessibility throughout the year. Um, and uh, and and uh, due to basically um, we were like uh, they weren't able to run it th uh, this year. So. Um, we were in talk they were in talks with the GA conference and they were like hey could you be able to uh, take this and run with it and uh, it just totally made sense it was a perfect partnership between uh, can, uh, can I play that and, and and game accessibility conference and it's and it, with all of what a game accessibility conference had been doing over the past multiple like multiple years of running these conferences talking about accessibility and building a community of game developers and just uh, accessibility advocates it just seemed like a perfect fit uh, to uh, to honor uh, the game that we've been talking about and having developers on to talk about their games uh and it just it, it made sense to uh to highlight and celebrate uh the amazing work that is being done uh in the accessibility uh, community or the, uh, and all the accessible games that have been put out uh just within the past year you know and what a year it has been it sounds like you know despite the fact there's only one or two accessible games being talked about a couple of years ago more and more are appearing almost monthly 
Oh, 100 percent. And uh, we we kind of always had said uh, when The Last of Us 2 came out and it was getting uh, rightfully so all the accolades that it was getting for for its accessibility, um, that this was going to be something that um, that we still have yet to see the impact of it uh, in regards to the industry. Uh, I I, kind of said at the time it's going to be about in between five to ten years when we can actually get to a point where majority of of developers and studios are putting out games that are uh, as hopefully as close to being as accessible as the last of us part two uh so we like we're, we're still kind of in that middle period where they're like the good thing is is that now studios understand the why accessibility is important in their games and now we're just figuring out the how and so in and, and because every game is different every sort of studio is different in, in what their experience com, uh, comes in and uh, who they need to be able to bring in to uh, help with that or what the, what the process is. So we're still in that kind of like flux period, but we are starting to see some gems and some highlights of games that uh, are doing it and doing it well um, from from indies all the way up to AAA. I mean, it's it's really cool to be able to see. It's not just the big boys that are uh, that are making uh, accessible games. It's the uh, it's the indie developers too. Like there's some in some cases they're able to put in more uh, a, a, a great accessibility content into their games uh, more than uh, uh, than the triple A's can. So uh, it really is a great time in the industry to to be jumping in on on accessibility. And the the more time passes, the more games that come out, uh, the more accessible uh, the the gaming industry will be. Yeah, I, I heard you say this during the awards itself that these indie developers are so important. And I guess that's because despite their smaller amount of resources, they might actually be more accessible to us disabled gamers, right? They're going to listen and pay attention to what the community needs. 100%. Uh, it's because it, they're the ones that are going to be playing it. Uh, for, uh, for, so that getting that community feedback is important. But also, it, you can't uh, uh, just sort of uh, sort of slap on an accessibility option and be like, okay, good. Now, now our game's accessible. It's not as simple as that. There are like even like as I've often said is that disability is a spectrum that then it is an on off switch. And even with someone that has the exact same disability, their two lives could be completely different. Uh, I have a friend of mine, James Rath, who is a, a blind YouTuber. We both have the same condition. We both have nystagmus. We both have albinism and uh, we, we have the exact same experiences, but we both have different, uh, uh, different sort of a blindness that um, make like he has to uh, use a, a cane all the time, whereas I I don't as often. Uh, he has to, he's looking into getting a guide dog, whereas I don't need one. It's so even with that in and of itself, it just kind of shows the diversity of uh, disabilities in that sense. So when you have uh, when you when studios bring in the community to basically say, hey, can we like what is what does this game feel like? What does this game work like? It's sort of allows us to kind kind of uh to sort of showcase here's our day-to-day -day experience and not every disability is different so the more options and the more customization you can give into a game the better it'll be so what about you personally steve what's next what's on tap for the blind gamer uh, so for me, it, uh, it's kind of twofold. I've been uh, I've been doing a lot of content creation, uh, kind of really talking about and and doing more reviews uh, of video games. I feel like that that is uh, is kind of still needed, um, and there's not really a lot a lot of uh, uh, creators that kind of focus in on that. There's amazing accessibility creators, uh, but uh, I feel like I have the kind of I can I, with the professional radio background that I have. I feel like I can be able to talk about that. So I'll be doing a lot more uh, reviews of games, and then I, I'm also still consulting. Uh, can't say which games I'm working on yet, but one that I'm working on right now, actually, I can say is that I'm currently the accessibility consultant for the Call of Duty franchise, so we'll start to see uh, with uh, the next little while uh, of stuff that uh, I'll be working on uh, that'll be making, basically my goal is to try to be able to make a Call of Duty as accessible as possible, so, and and that's one of the biggest franchises in video games, so if I can, if I, fingers crossed that they'll, me and the team can be able to work on that and make it possible, then uh, then that just makes it accessibility even, expand even more to the general gaming public than before. Before. So, um, yeah, and just that's, that's it's kind of just kind of going with the flow and seeing what happens. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on, Steve. Remind people where we can find you uh, or where we can follow you online. Sure, yeah, you can be able to go to uh, stevesailor.net. Uh, that's where uh, I'm mostly at. But if you can follow me on Twitter, at Steve Sailor, or on YouTube, at Steve Sailor, or on twitch.tv slash blind gamer Steve. Steve Saylor, everybody, if you want to find him online, as he said, let me spell that out for you guys. It's Steve, S-T-E-V-E, -E, and Saylor is S-A-Y-L-O-R dot net. So, I mean, you know, I don't know about you, Mark. I have to be honest, whenever I've talked about this on my radio show, 
the gaming subject never really gets a lot of interest. And I think it's because a lot of blind people, and Steve's admitted this himself, he admitted it on the awards, that you know when he was starting out and he was playing games, he couldn't do it very well. And he thought that was because he was pretty rubbish at it, but it was because he couldn't see to play the game. So he was, was disabled in that sense. He wasn't able to play the game and that's changed. So I think, you know, the conversation is starting to get out there and I'm glad we're having this conversation. We're able to highlight the great work that's being done. And just let's hope more and more games that come out you know, over the next few months and years, just continue to have all the accessibility features for everyone. You know, as we keep the conversation going here, the Game Conference Awards is just another excuse to talk about it and to get the word out there that they are coming out with more and more accessible games. So the people who may have given up and said, oh, I, can't, I just can't do this, might realize there is an opportunity now and there will be more and more of these to come. It certainly makes it more likely that someone like me would go out and buy a PlayStation 5 because now I see so many options. I see so many cool accessibility features, even more are being rolled out as we speak. So. You know, I think that there's, there's great progress going on here and I think spreading the word is key so that everyone can try this out because this is not a young person's thing. Yes, I know a lot of young people play games, but a lot of older people are getting into gaming now. And why not? We've all got to kill time somehow, Stephen. We all got to kill time. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for uh, being here. Thank you, everybody, for being on the show today. Thank you to Ben Breen, of course, and Steve Salem, the Blind Gamer. Uh, on behalf of everybody here, uh, thanks for watching Double Tap TV. We'll catch you next week. Thanks for watching Double Tap. Send us your feedback to feedback at doubletaponair.com. Leave us a voicemail at 1-877-803-4567. Hosted by Marco Flalo in Montreal and Stephen Scott in Glasgow. Produced Producer Marka Flalo, editing and graphics Jordan Steves, voiceover Anna Vicino, social media Wendy Kaufman, integrated described video specialist M. Williams, supervising producer Michelle Dudas, manager programming AMI TV Lizanne Gagne, director content development and production Kara Nye, VP content development and operations John Melville, president and CEO David Arrington, copyright 2023 Accessible Media Inc. An AMI original production.